Alrighty folks, it is August 17th, 2022, and this is going to be the first ever sermon vlog. So, my name is Ian Littlepage, and I guess, I don't know, I just got this idea, because a lot of times vlogs seem kind of boring, because nothing really exciting happens, there's nothing that I can really take away from them, and a lot of times sermons can get kind of repetitive and boring so i figured why not walk you guys through my day my activities and talk about god while i do it and have fun so right now i'm biking to this lake so i can't really do a ton of like preaching i guess you would say but i don't know i'm feeling pretty good i got states coming up well hopefully states coming up for mountain biking first i need to do some races and qualify which I've never done before. So I'm a little bit nervous about that, but it's cross country mountain biking. So any sort of biking helps. So I've just been trying to train for that and have fun while I do it. But I mean, yeah, I'm feeling pretty good. Um, it can get kind of lonely sometimes, I guess, when you're just like home alone for a while. I definitely like being around other people, but even what I'm doing now, just like, talking into my phone it's almost like i'm talking to somebody else because i mean hopefully somebody else will watch this but yeah i just love talking about things that i like i don't know if you can really hear me right now because of the wind it's pretty nice out though at least it's not 100 degrees like it's been it's like 80 now although i'd prefer to for it to be a little bit cooler but i have school coming up definitely not looking forward to that a ton. I mean, I like the social aspect of it and I like classes that I like. <laughs> like if it's a class where the subject matter is something that I'm interested in, then I like it. I just, I think it's a lot of it's dumb, but I guess that's where college should be a little bit more fun for me. Cause I'll be able to take classes, specialize in what I, you know, what I'm interested in, which is mechanical engineering. I'll probably go for mechanical engineering. Although it's not like I want to become a mechanical engineer, really. I more so just want to be... I just want to... I, will, I want to be self-employed, definitely. Have my own business. Obviously, these sermon vlogs... Or vlog sermon? What am I calling them? I think... Oh, crap. I'm going under a bridge. Whoa. Okay. But I think... Um, I definitely want to be self-employed. I don't necessarily want to go to college to go work for an employer afterwards. Um, but I feel that, well, yeah, self-employed and preferably with one of these businesses, this current one that I'm working on, which is why I started these sermon vlogs, um, the Moving for God organization, just trying God's love and I guess somehow like able to make a living off that, but I don't want to make the focus of it making a ton of money i really just want to help people with everything i do i guess that's one of the reasons i want to go for mechanical engineering because it'll give me the knowledge to invent things i've always liked inventing things a couple of years ago during covid i invented these little small plastic clips they were called mask attached clips and they attached like any mask to any hat so that if you like wore a hat then you could have a mask attached inside your hat and nobody can see it and then whenever you need a mask, you could just like pull it out of your hat and then it would go over your face and, um, you know, protect you, I suppose, from COVID or I guess protect others. I guess that's what they do. But, and also it took away the pain from your ears, but helping people, obviously, if you're helping people not die and you're helping people, right? <laughs> but um, yeah, I have, I have a couple other ideas where I really feel that mechanical engineering could help me like bring them to life. One of them I just came with earlier today is called the simple bed. I still have to test it tonight. That's why I vacuumed my floor earlier, but it's just like a piece of wood with a little mat on it to sleep on. Cause I think a lot of times people try to complicate things, whether it's like some memory foam mattress or like motors in the bed or whatever to shape to your body. But really, People are on their phones a lot, which makes them slouch. 
and then they get in bed which shapes to their slouch and then they sleep all night slouching because their bed forms to their bad posture that just makes the slouch worse it's like come on let's not make the problem worse so i figured might as well just make a flat surface for somebody to sleep on i still gotta test it out though who knows this could be an awful idea but we'll see um and yeah biking inventions i don't know if you can see that but it's like you probably couldn't see that but i like um not so invented but like designed and 3d printed a mount so that i could could attach my um my fishing pole to my bike i just saw somebody but so that i could like uh well i don't have my fishing pole now fishing pole now but it's just a way for you to um like attach your fishing pole to your bike so that you don't have to carry your fishing pole in your hand while you're biking because i man i love fishing and biking so why not combine them right but those are like the top two things honestly top few hobbies i suppose god's number one but falling under that which helped me to like see god's what god's creation i like biking so much fun getting out and exercising it's so important to be healthy man like, if you're not physically healthy, then you can't really do a ton. Mental health is just as important, don't get me wrong. That's where God comes in, but like biking and fishing, they help me to get out even when I don't really feel like it, to, you know, stay physically active. And as soon as I'm out, man, I love it. But it's really hard when you get into those like phases of the day where you're just like scrolling on TikTok forever or like YouTube shorts or whatever or just like just wasting your brain brain away just laying in bed or sitting in a chair just doing nothing it it sucks man I still struggle with it all the time like that's why I finally got out on this bike to record this first thing I've been thinking about doing this for a while but I haven't mainly because I've been Wasting all my time away, scrolling on TikTok or all that crap. And it's just, we really got to get away from that stuff. And I think the best way to do it is just do something else besides that, right? That's the best way to avoid doing bad things is replace them with good things. So it's a lot easier to do good things though when you got God. God's like, I, I'm going to keep on talking about that, but yeah. God's a solution to everything, man. It, it all starts with God. It's not like I'm saying that like, oh, is my seat loose? Oh, my seat's loose. And I don't have a multi-tool. Sorry. Am I apologizing to you? Well, I guess I'm apologizing. Oh, there's a car here. They're stopping for me. Thank you. What a nice lady. It's so cool seeing other people be nice. Man, my seat is really loose. I might need to stop and fix this. I don't know, do I, am I gonna like edit this thing? Like record a ton of different videos on my phone and then like edit it? Or how am I, how am I gonna go about this? I don't know why I'm asking you. I mean, you'll know after I do it. <laughs> what am I doing? Okay, this is my cue to start recording real quick. And then I got, I guess I like, I typed out these like notes and stuff with some Bible verses and topics and examples to talk about, but I don't really feel like reading my notes right now while I'm biking and recording and crashing into some somebody. That would not be good. Um, so yeah, I'll see you in a bit, bye. Alrighty, we have made it to the lake, to the place where I was biking to. Although, I don't think I'm gonna start doing the whole sermon recording thing now, just cause um, I still wanna bike around the lake some. Why am I, why do I sound all depressed right now? Why am I taking this, bro? No, it was so much fun though. We were, um, not we, me. What am I doing, man? Sorry, guys. Why am I saying sorry? Okay, sorry. <laughs> okay. 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 So, after I quit that last recording, um, the video, um, when I was still biking here, like, I just finished and also it's like, what is it? It's like four o'clock in the afternoon right now. And like, just school just started up. So it's great because I was able to finish biking here. There's a school right in between where I finished recording and this lake where I'm at. So I biked fast. Everybody was getting out of school. I was able to say what's up to everybody, say hi, 
just, it was so cool, man. There were some kids that looked pretty sad and I was able to say hi and make them smile, which it just makes me feel so good, dude. Um, so yeah, well, yeah, you're gonna hear me talk about that a lot. Just making other people smile is so awesome, which is why I'm making this Moving for God organization in the first place. It's just so cool. But we're at this beautiful lake. Luckily, my school doesn't start till tomorrow. So I guess that's a, a pro. Even though school's starting, it doesn't start today. So I must be happy about that, right? Um, but I'll probably bike a couple laps around the loop, get a little bit of a workout in. Um, I guess once I'm over there, I can show you the beach. To show you, you'll get it once I start talking about God. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna uh, get to that. I'll be right back with y'all. I don't know how or when, but we'll see. Bye. And one thing real quick. This is doesn't really have to do with anything. Well, it does have to do with something. But um, my seat, like, it wasn't even that loose, really. Like, earlier I stopped it because I was going to check to see if my seat was loose. Seat was loose on my bike, but it's not even that loose. Like, my... It's not... It, like, it's crazy how much our brain exaggerates things and worries about things. Last night, I got so worried about something that is going perfectly fine. When I was falling asleep and it was stressing me out and I couldn't fall asleep. And it's like, our brains can, like, take things way too far, man. And just stress us out for no reason. But if we're able to take advantage of our brains and use them for the right reasons and do the, use them for good... Because humans are smart, man, but they could also be really dumb. One second. On your left. Thank you so much. Have a good day. That was awesome. The lady said, you too. Now I'll have a great day. Excuse me. Have a good one. Oh. Startled that kid. I feel kind of bad about that. He kind of jumped. All up. I should have said on your left. See, now I'm, I'm going to quit like... Normally, I'd be like, oh, I should have said on your left. Why didn't I say on your left? And then my brain would just freak out about that for, like, a couple minutes. But, like, it already happened, man. Why Why would I worry about that so much? So, our brains are really interesting. We just got to use them for the, right, for the right things. And don't let things get out of control, right? You got to bring things down to us a lot of the time. Simple. Simplicity is a lot better. So let's just keep it simple and not overthink. It's a lot easier said than done. Um, maybe my seat is loose though. Oh, I just heard it pop. I don't know. But that can be for another episode, talking about brains and overthinking. Man, that's, I don't know crap about that, but I could talk about it still. On your left. Thank you, have a good day. Me too. See, those people were so kind. All right, I'm a. Did somebody? No. No. Somebody erased. Last night I was here with my brother. Fish. Ah. Ah. Somebody erased it. I'll talk about this in a bit. I gotta save that for later. It was one of my examples. Um. Okay. I'll be back. Eight more loops. I'm gonna do eight more loops around this lake. Okay, I promise I won't, I don't promise. I might start recording again during these eight loops. Whatever, bye. See, it's really hard to not be repetitive. I think that's a skill that I'm still trying to learn, but repeating yourself, I don't know. I think when you repeat yourself, it means that what you're repeating is important, but rather than saying the same thing over and over, I think I gotta like research what I'm repeating and really think about what I'm saying to get my point across in a more efficient manner. Um, okay, I got some busy sidewalk up here, bye. Okay, I'm gonna say this now before I forget it. That's one reason that I like that I'm starting to do these, like sermon vlogs. I've always like written stuff down in my notes a lot, but I really, I think it's important to just say what's on your mind right away, unless it's like something awful, right? <laughs> There's a lot of ideas that we can have that we just forget. Um, okay, that's one lap. But there's a lot of ideas that we have that we just forget because we just put them off. I mean, that's how you forget stuff, right?
Okay. That's whatever. What am I doing? I know what I'm... Okay, sorry. Sorry. I'm not... Hey, I didn't cuss there. Zealand a year ago would have cussed the crap out of his phone just then. But he didn't. How about that? What if he just said on my... Man. Okay. But, oh yeah, buying used. I think buying things used is very smart. Because as soon as you buy something new and use it for a day, then it becomes used. So, it's the same thing like with bikes and stuff. Like, if you buy a brand new bike and then you get in the crash with your bike and then it gets all scratched up, then your bike has scratches in it, just like a used bike would have had if you bought a used bike. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you might as well buy a phone used with scratches in the screen because you're going to end up putting scratches in the screen yourself in like a week after you buy the phone. So you might as well just buy it with scratches right away for like half the price. I just think it's really smart to do that. Um, unless it's like, I guess really it's just cosmetically if the person that used the product before you bought it to damage it cosmetically then it's not a big deal but if it's like beat the crap out of something and it's like in very bad condition functionality wise then i don't think it's very smart that's another thing like functionality is smart and everything like go for functionality don't go for looks or like expensive or whatever just go for what's smart um hello have a good one. You too. What kind gentleman spread the way for me? And then I was able to say hello. Then they said hello. What a fun time. Okay. Lady alert. On your left. Thank you. Have a good day. You too. Hey, second time. Her and I said thank you. Have a good day. You too. It's our little phrase. Her and I. Not in a creepy way. She's like 60. But... Man, what am I saying? Um, but like this bike I got right now, this thing was like 200 bucks. Normally it'd be like 600, but it's very functional for what I need. It might not look the prettiest. Actually, it looks pretty dang good for a cheap bike. And like, yeah, $200 isn't, it, $200 is not a small amount of money. Like I'm lucky, man. I'm very glad that I'm able to work for like my grandparents or my nana or whatever and make money to buy things for myself. I'm thankful for that. And, um, but yeah, this, this little bike works so well. Like I have a mountain bike that's much more expensive. Okay, that's two laps. I have a mountain bike that's much more expensive, but it's horrible for rides like this because it's heavy and it has big tires. It's not built for sidewalks. But I, but I was able to spend half, less, way less than half the amount of money on that mountain bike, on this bike. And it does the job way better than the mountain bike, even though it's cheaper. And I got this for an even better deal because it was used. So if you're smart about your purchases and get something that's functional, I think that's a great idea. I guess I still have to apply this to real life on a more adult level. I'm only 17 now. I guess once I'm an adult, then I'll have to be smart about my purchases when it comes to buying cars and homes, which I'm sure is not as simple as bikes, but we'll see. We're doing good, man. All right, lap two, six more. I really did not fulfill my promise about not recording during this. Hello. Hi. Oh, that was so sick. That lady was so nice. Let's go. Okay, bye. I really need to put grease on this bike chain, on this bike. Dogs don't have back problems at a young age, do they? No, that's right. Because they sleep on dog beds on a hard, flat floor with a little bit of padding. So that's why we need to make a human bed for the floor. On the floor with a flat floor with a little bit of padding. Alrighty, we just got done with our laps.
it ended up being 15 laps because after lap six, this one lady said five more and we kept on passing each other. I was going around the lake, going around the lake and she was walking and we kept on saying hi and laughing. And then I was on my last lap and then she said three more. So then I got to do three more and I got to push myself and then I ended up at about 15 laps. So it was definitely better than eight laps, a better workout considering I'm trying to make states. I think I gotta be doing that. Con also considering that I'm on a much easier bike for this kind of riding compared to a heavy mountain bike. But yeah, thankful for that lady that she was kind and that she pushed me, that was pretty cool. There, there's a lot of people on the walk that I had a fun time talking with. Not even talking with. Everybody always thinks, oh, whenever I'm talking to somebody, you have to have some, like, full-on small talk conversation. No, man. It just takes a, hey, how are you? Just something funny, you'll laugh or whatever. Like, it's really simple. Um, okay, I'm gonna go ahead and drink some more water. I was getting caught up and scrolling on TikTok once I got back, eating these cheeses and scrolling, but now that I've noticed it's cheeses, I guess I gotta stop scrolling and do something worthwhile. So... Let's see. I printed out this paper. It's got some Bible verses and stuff. We'll read through those. And then I guess that's it for the first ever sermon vlog. I mean, this is going to take a while, though. I don't know. Will it? We'll see. Okay, I'm going to drink some water. I'll be right back. Okay, well, I got the paper out. Drink some water. So I guess we're ready. Um, so I titled this sermon vlog number one. I guess that's pretty obvious. But the topic is just genuinely loving everybody. And I just picked three verses and three examples to go along with this sermon. I don't know how to write these, but I'm sure we can we can do it. So the first verse is let's start with Matthew 5, 13 to 16. And this is oops, I got almost I guess I'll sit on it. Um and it reads <laughs> I'm sorry. And it reads, um, you are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its saltiness how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others that you may, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. So I think what this verse is trying to say is we know what salt is, right? There's salt in these. Well, I kind of licked it all up, but... There's salt in Cheez-Its. There's salt in salt baths, right? So if salt is normally used to enhance the flavor of something, or it could be even used, uh, what's it called? What's it called where you put salt on meat so that it doesn't like go bad? You get the idea. But either way, salt is an important tool that we have, and it's flavor and just, you know, it's salt. God, I'm not good at this. Salt... If salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? Okay, so that, I guess, let's just say the salt is flavor, right? We put salt on our food to make our food taste better. And if we don't have salt on our food, and if the salt don't work, then the food won't taste as good. And so we are like salt, right? We have flavor. We're each unique humans that has our own background, our own attributes, and our own gifts from God, right? And if we don't share those gifts from, with God from other people, then the gifts are going to leave us? That doesn't sound right. Um, let's see. So salt, like basically if we don't express ourselves and be unique, if we try to fake it or whatever, then we're not going to be genuine. Just like if salt tries to taste like sugar, then it's not going to taste like salt. What am I saying? Either way, it's saying like be genuine. Okay, let's skip this salt stuff. This isn't really going anywhere. Let's go to the you are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden, right? So we are god's creation and we are the people meant to share god's love with others right not everybody gets to know about god or maybe everybody has heard about god but they've had a bad experience with god or their family says that they're christian and they believe in god and their family treats this kid horribly and then the kid thinks okay well, god's bad because my family believes in god and they're bad right so it's our job as genuinely followers of God, or even if you're not a like follower of God, you can still do this and you can still be genuine and kind and trust me, you'll you'll realize it. God's what's up once you start doing this. All right. <laughs> but um yeah, it's it's our job to spread kindness with everybody. And when spreading kindness, I've already said this a ton, 
Um, earlier I was talking about how it's annoying when I repeat myself, but I guess when I repeat myself, it means that it's important. But even a hi can mean so much. We are the light of the world. We are meant to go out and say hi to everybody. We can't just say, uh, I'll grab that in a bit. We can't just say hi to people that we think are cool or we think won't judge us, right? We gotta do it with everybody. And I'm still f trying to figure out how to do that. I think this upcoming school year will help me do that because it's gonna be a lot more diverse than the old people that I see walking around the sidewalk. Um, but yeah, it's super important that we show God's love with others and then that'll make us feel good. It feels good to give, give love with each other. And it'll become easier and easier as we keep on going. And going along with giving, we'll go to my second verse that I brought up. This is 2 Corinthians 9, 6 through 8. Verse 9. Do I not even know how the Bible works? 2 Corinthians. I don't know. I'll just read it. Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to bless you abundantly so that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. I think what this verse is saying is that if we give to people for the right motives, then God will bless us. See, this Moving for God organization that I'm creating, it's not all about like going around and just saying hi to people just because it'll make you feel good or whatever or just because you think it's the right thing to do it's about genuinely wanting to make people happy and if you genuinely do it like out of the goodness of your heart then it'll make you happy too like what did it say it said not reluctantly or under compulsion it's like it's like when you were a little well i guess as little kids we don't understand this as much but it's like when our parents say tell tell that person thank you after somebody does something for us it's like you know we say thank you, but we don't really know what it means. We're just saying thank you to somebody because our parents said so. So it's important to do things because we want to, not just because it's like the thing that you're supposed to do so that you're not rude or whatever. We want to like go out of our way to make people happy and give them, I don't know, give them a high. I guess that's not proper English. You could give them anything. I'm going to start giving more tithes to the church. I think the 10% rule is what it says in the Bible. So like 10% of the money I have go to my church just giving 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 and then we we just got to trust man like from what i've learned with this time with god that i've been spending where i'm like legit close to god like god's best friend over the past half year or so like i've been a lot kinder to people and i can see it playing playing out of my life um like karma i guess i guess like positive karma where it's like if you're nice to somebody then god will be nice to you right um but yeah God will bless us abundantly so that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. So, yeah, it says good works, and we're not saved by works, right? But it's a lot easier to do good works in a genuine manner if we are first saved by God, just by purely trusting in God, which takes time. But it's the best, man. So, yeah. I don't know if I'm explaining this well, but I think you get the idea. I hope you get the idea. I'll get better at this as we go on. Okay, let's just go to the next verse. Um, Matthew 6, 1, ooh, this is a good one. Matthew 6, 1 through 4. Here we go, it's a bit longer. Be careful not to practice your righteousness in front of others to be seen by them. If you do, you will have no reward from your Father in heaven. So, when you give to the needy, do not announce it with trumpets as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and on the streets to be honored by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when it's so hard to say the word reward, especially with braces. I'm used to my braces. What a dumb excuse. Oh, I gotta put my rubber bands in. But when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your giving may be in secret. Then your father, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. So I think what this is about is it's the same thing as what I was saying before, right? I guess that's why I picked these three verses, because they all kind of relate with each other. But when you're showing your light to the world and when you're giving to others, you don't just want to do it so that other people think that you're cool, right? You want to do it because you genuinely want to do it for God. It's all about doing things for God, right? Not for you, right? Um, so yeah, it says, be careful not to practice your righteousness in front of others to be seen by them. So I guess it's saying like, it wouldn't be good to, if I were to go out and go on a long bike ride and say hi to like 50 people and make 50 people smile and then go out on, and like make an Instagram post just saying, made 50 people smile today, I'm better than you. Like that'd be lame. 
That'd be lame, wouldn't it? I think that'd be really lame, don't you? What am I doing? You know what I'm saying though? Like, it's not good to boast about what you're doing. It's important to be genuine with your actions and not just do it for the likes or for the follows or whatever, which is hard for me to do. It's hard for me to not do things just for the money, right? So it's a learning process and we're all in it together. But as long as we're trying to flee from that sin of boasting, then we'll be rewarded. And that's that's what matters most to God is trying to flee from sin. We still might fail though. We still might fail. We will fail. I mean, we're human. Dumb devil. Oh, I was about to say the F word, but I didn't. See, I'm not even sure if it necessarily is a horrible... I guess I ought to look in the Bible. Bible has the answers, but like... Cussing. I guess it doesn't... If, it, if it's not helpful, then it's hurtful, right? That's what my dad says. Um, so yeah, when you give to the needy, do not announce it with trumpets. Now, there's a difference between giving to a homeless person and telling somebody that you gave to a homeless person like so that they want to give to a homeless person and like giving to a homeless person then like going and like telling everybody about it making a big deal saying that you're the best right it's all about motives it like my motives behind telling people that i guess telling y'all that like what a couple hours ago when i was biking here i biked past a ton of kids and i said hi to them and made them smile like my motive behind that isn't so that you guys think like i'm the best person ever is showing that when I'm doing that for God, making other others happy, it makes me really happy. And I'm trying to tell y'all that like, if you do the same, you'll, you'll feel happy. So yeah, I guess you get the idea. Now, I, what did I say? In real life examples. Okay, so I'll just read out what I wrote. We have three of these. In the Bible, the Pharisees were like experts when it came to the Jewish culture. So Pharisees, they're like these people that were like really smart when it came to religion and stuff. And they would go around and show everybody everything they knew about God. But they wouldn't do this for God, right? They would just do it to show off. They would, like, have super long prayers. They would preach just so that they would get to heaven, just trying to get saved by good works. They would judge people less than them. You know, they were living their life for the wrong reasons. And in turn, they were not blessed by God, right? So rather than doing things to show off like the Pharisees did, it's important to do things such as spreading kindness for God um, in a genuine manner, doing it for God, not for yourself, not for your own, like, not for your own ego boost or whatever, but doing it for God. If you genuinely do it for God, it'll make you feel happy. You won't have to get a ton of likes on Instagram to feel happy, right? So yeah, doing things for God so that you stay genuine and on the right path, because a lot of people, they could go down a path of, like, why am I getting quieter? There's somebody walking up, who cares? We're on a floating rock. But a lot of people, they would, um, what am I saying? I know a lot of people, they could, like, become super rich or whatever, and they would think, oh, yeah, I'm blessed, but if they're rich for the wrong reasons, or if they don't give their money for the wrong reasons, then it won't lead them down the right path, and they could end up becoming really selfish and lonely or whatever. I mean, you get what I'm saying. So, yeah, just stay genuine when you're talking with people, and it's all about motives. If you're doing something for the right motive, for God, then it'll, it'll work out. So, yeah, people can tell if you're faking it, so don't fake it. Like... Don't be like, hey, how are you? You're like, hey, how are you? Uh, I mean, it's easier to do that if you actually want to do it. So get in the mindset where you want to do it. Let's see. Oh, there's a guy. He just walked past me. Okay, we have two more examples. Um, oh, this is at this lake. This, is, this was at this lake, this example. So 12 minutes, not bad. I guess, how long will this be? 40 minutes? I don't know. But the other day, my brother and I were fishing at this lake. Right, this, this lake right here. And the, the beach that I'm gonna be talking about is right back that way. I don't know if you can see it. I was talking about it earlier. I don't wanna bike back over there though, I'm tired. <sighs> I've been busy lately, man. I've been tired, but it's, hard. it's all good. Now we're doing this and now I, I feel like I got energy. I'm just physically tired, I suppose. And mentally, I'm not gonna lie, but it's all good. Look at this, guys. Isn't that so cool? <laughs> okay the other day my brother and i were fishing at this lake and i decided to write out the words i and then i wrote out like a heart like a Pew. right like you know a heart i did i heart you on the stand like i used a stick and i like drew it in this hand and it was pretty big right um so that people could see it from the sidewalk and hopefully i could like cheer them up if i mean you know if they saw that somebody said i love you then that might make them happy 
but just wait, just wait. Um, and later that evening, like 30 minutes after I had writ written it, written, 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 you get the idea. But I was standing near the sidewalk near the beach where I had written the thing in the sand. And um, this family, they walked by on the sidewalk behind me and they all saw that it said, I love you in the sand. And a lot of them, they were like, aw, aw, aw. Sorry. <laughs> they were like, oh, that's so cute, blah, blah, blah. And then the dad of the family, he was like, oh, that poor kid, it's probably a 16 year old boy thinking that he's in love with a girl. So he writes that for her only to get broken up within a month, right? This guy was being super negative about it, saying like, this guy is dating this girl and he's writing, I love you for her, and then it's, it's never gonna end well. And that made me think, like, a lot of that time that's true, like, dating relationships many times are just fake, and people just do it for, like, sex and stuff, and a lot of times it's short-lived because it's not genuine love, right? Just high school relationships, if it's not for the right motives, then it's pretty dumb, if it's just to be cool. Being cool, man. <sighs> um... But yeah, but if we're genuine with our love for each other and try to love everybody like God does, then we wouldn't find ourselves in fake relationships that never truly make us happy, right? So it's important to realize, uh, realios, typo. <laughs> it's important to realize that you don't need to be dating somebody to love them, right? You don't even need to be friends with them. Like all it takes is, is a genuine high to show somebody that you care and love them, right? So I guess what I'm trying to get at with this is that guy thought that it said I love you, which automatically means it's um dating relationship, which is gonna suck, right? But really when you say I love you, it it could just be a high it could just be a friendship, it could be anything, right? And it could be anybody. You don't I'm not saying like I don't wanna get cancelled. But yeah, if we're going off by what the Bible says, I'm not saying like date guys, right? I don't wanna get cancelled. But you, you know what I'm saying. Um, well, if you're a girl, then yeah. But if a guy and a guy, no. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, but, like, love doesn't always have to be, like, dating relationship type deal. You know? If it's God's love, genuinely God's love, the way that God would love us, then you can love everybody and just be happy with everybody. And then there is that one person that you marry because you love them so much. But... You get the idea. Um, so, yeah. What my youth group leader was talking about this once. He's like, people just can't appreciate things for what they are, right? Like, you can just be friends with somebody. You don't always have to date people, right? If you try to force things, that's not good. I'm all about not forcing things. Letting things happen naturally is definitely important. Okay. Third in real life example that I said, that I wrote earlier today. Um, sometimes when I go on bike rides or walks and say hello to everybody I see and ask people how they're doing, I can get like pretty bland responses. So most of the time people are just like, good, and then walk away. Like, I'll be like, hey, how are you? And they're just like, good. And then they'll just like, keep on walking, head down, all depressed. And those are the people that need the most help, dude. And also like patience is super, what am I saying? Patience is important. Carp fishing will teach you that. Back to the subject. You, we just gotta be nice to everybody, man, especially those where you can tell that they're sad, that doesn't mean like stray away from them because they're weird or whatever, that they need the most help, dude. Like really, really, boy. Um, but yeah, I feel like in our society, a lot of times people just say things because they're supposed to, not because they actually care. Like if I were to go up and ask somebody how they're doing and then they just ignore me, that's considered rude. But if they say good, apparently that's being polite. Just saying good, like all boring. I get it if you're like good, I like saying great. Because a lot of times people will say good when they're actually feeling pretty bad. Um, yeah, it's just like robot responses. we got to be more genuine with what we're doing. Like, what I'm, what I'm going to get at. So it's important to say genuine when we, when we greet others. And then that'll help other people be genuine back to us. Because if we just ask somebody how they're doing because it's what you're supposed to do, then it's not going to be a very fun conversation. But if you're genuinely about it and genuinely, like, act happy and actually act like you want to know, then you might get a good response back, so... It starts with us being nice to others, and then, you know, it all it all comes around. We gotta do it for God, though. That's the key. Ever, for ever since humanity, people have always tried to do things, and but their solutions haven't been centered around God, so it's not really worked. I mean, obviously, you can tell this world's got some issues, but it's also got some great things that we can bring out with God. Just saying. 
just you gotta let God come to you though. I'll get I'll get to that in like another sermon. There's so much, man. It's so awesome. But yeah, I'll get to that. It's all about trust. And it takes time, patience, carp fishing, right? But yeah, don't just be nice because you're supposed to be nice because you want to. I wrote that early and I was like, oh, that's a quote. But yeah, be nice because you actually want to. It's all about going out of your way. Because if you actually go out of your way and like walk off a trail or something, not like intruding someone's space, but if you go out of your way, you know what I'm saying. It's all about, what is it? Discernment, that's the word. If you if you genuinely do something because you care and you go out of your way for somebody, they'll, they'll see that. Humans are smart. They'll see that and that'll make a big difference. So yeah, that's about it for, where's the other paper? Sermon number one. What did I title this? Oh, it's all sweaty now. Genuinely loving everybody. It all starts with God. Okay, I'll get back to that, but I think that's it for this sermon vlog. Actually, I might I might think of something later on the bike ride home and like record another little video segment of that. But I think you got y'all got the main gist of it. So I don't know. Let me know what you think. Is this gonna be on YouTube? I guess I could definitely improve. Please let me know how I could improve. I, maybe or maybe this is great. I don't know. You tell me. But yeah, thank y'all for watching. I love you guys. Moving for God organization. That's why I kind of started this. Just check it out. I guess I'll like have links in the description. But it really like captures everything that I'm trying to do in life right now. And anybody can be a part of it. And I think it should should really help you guys and help people and spread kindness. So yeah, check that ch check that out. Let me know what you think about the sermon vlog. Also, please tell me if there's a better name that um, a better name for what I'm doing right now than sermon vlog, like SOG. <laughs> no, that's awful. Okay, thank you so much for watching. I might talk more, I might not. Either way, see you later and have a great day or not. Actually, have a good one. I'm not just saying that for the fun of it. Actually, do something fun. <laughs> okay, bye. Dang it, I already messed up. I was on a streak. Oh, there's a lot of streaks of not soon. Ooh. We ought to do a video on that, man. There's a lot of stuff that goes on, a lot of sins that are hard to, like, addictions and stuff. But this leaf just fell on me. I, like, cussed out the tree. Dang it. Maybe that's harmless. So if it's harmless, if it's not directed towards somebody, I'll do some more research and let y'all know about cussing. But I was like, tree. <laughs> Bye. I about just littered. This thing, she's this bad thing is getting away. Nope. Jesus are better than goldfish, too. Man, my helmet's always crooked. That's not what I'm saying. I'm not going to lie, you guys. My helmet was crooked, and then I fixed it. And then I was about to start recording. I was like, no, I'm going to make it crooked so that I can see that my helmet's crooked. Man, what am I doing? How many times am I going to say that? I'm doing life, man. I'm doing. That's what I'm doing. I'm doing life. I'm having a great time. Let's go. But what I was saying, it's this one band, C fret. They're very good. And I just, ooh, that could be a good episode. Uh, not even episode. Just a good thing to talk about, just music. <sighs> music. I haven't taken, oh, that'd be, ooh, just wait. I haven't taken time to breathe yet ever since I went out on this bike ride vlog thing. And that's the song that I was just listening to called Breathe by Sifra. And it's a good song. And their whole, what's it called? Tell me it's real. It's a really good album i like all of the songs tell me it's real by c fret listen to that album okay bye <laughs>